Hello everyone, my name is Simon and I'm going to present this work. This is joint work with Shi Wei Sheng and Florian Kirchbaum from the University of Waterloo and Andreas Peter from the University of Twente. Uh, before I start, I want to give a big shout out to Shi Wei because he's done a great job in this work and most of the ideas in the paper are his ideas. Our work considers the following problem. Consider a user Alice and an honest but curious service provider. Alice has a data set with four documents. Each document has certain keywords that are represented by this table. For example, document one has the keywords cow and dog. Assume that this data set is too big for Alice to hold in her phone, but it's also privacy sensitive. So she wants to outsource it to the server. First, she encrypts the data set using symmetric encryption and sends it to the server. However, she also wants to be able to perform keyword queries in the data set. For this, she can use a searchable symmetric encryption scheme to transform the search index into an encrypted search index and send it to the adversary. Then the query process works as follows. Alice would type the keyword dog in her phone and press the button query. This will generate a query token encrypting the word dog. The adversary does not see the underlying keyword, but they can evaluate this query token in the encrypted search index. The result of this evaluation is the access pattern, which is the list of the documents that match the query. The adversary sees that documents 1, 2, and 4 have matched this query so they can return these documents encrypted to Alice. In this process, the leakage is the following. On the one hand, the adversary sees the access pattern of each of the queries, that is, the list of documents that have matched each of the queries. They also see the search pattern, which refers to which two query tokens are identical. In this case, the adversary sees that the first three queries are different, but queries number two and four are identical. Both these leakages can allow the adversary to recover the underlying keywords of each query. Therefore, it is very important to hide both types of leakage. One of the most efficient ways of hiding the search pattern is the scheme by Chen et al. that we call CLRC. The scheme takes the search index and generates false negatives and false positives. For instance, in this example, CLRC removes the keyword cat from the second document and adds it to the fourth document. This hides the access pattern at the cost of adding false negatives and false positives in the response to queries. Hiding the search pattern, however, is harder. On the one hand, in order to hide the search pattern, we need to generate query tokens differently every time. For example, if we query for the keyword dog at 10 a.m., and then we query for the same word five minutes later, we have to ensure that these two query tokens are different. Also, even if they are different, if these tokens generate the same access pattern, the adversary could guess that they indeed have the same underlying keyword and therefore recover the search pattern. Therefore, we need fresh randomness in the access pattern for every single query that the client issues. Our work uses the following primitive, IPPE, inner product predicate encryption, that works as follows. Alice has two vectors, A and X. She can compute uh, the ciphertext of each of these vectors and send the ciphertext to the adversary. The adversary using the ciphertext uh, can compute the inner product of the plain text, but they don't learn anything else than this about the plain text. We use IPPE for the secure evaluation of polynomials. A polynomial can be written like this in terms of its roots, but also can be expanded in terms of its coefficients. And this expression is just the inner product of A, which is the vector of the polynomial coefficients, and this vector X, which is just X to the power of zero, X to the power of one, X to the power of two, and so on. So we can use an IPP scheme to evaluate polynomials securely. Our scheme is called OSC, which stands for Obfuscated Searchable Symmetric Encryption. And I'm going to give an overview of the protocol. We have the data set and the search index, as well as a hash function that maps documents, which we have uh, n documents, to a set of labels. We generate a polynomial for each of the documents. These polynomials capture the keywords of each of the documents. Then we encrypt the polynomials using an IPP scheme, and then we attach a label, and the label is just the hash of the document ID. For example, for the fourth document, if the hash of 4 is 21, we attach the label 21 to this polynomial. Then we send those polynomials to the adversary. Then when we query for a keyword, we generate multiple query tokens and we attach a label to them. Then the adversary evaluates all of the tokens with a certain label in all of the polynomials with the same label. 
Then the adversary returns the documents for which at least one query token evaluated in the corresponding polynomial was zero. We're going to see how we generate these polynomials, the roots of these polynomials, and then the query tokens. So for the polynomial generation, we're going to consider this example, consider this document number 30 that has three keywords, the keywords dog, cow, and rat. And L is the hash of this document ID. L is the label of this document. So the first three roots of the polynomial of this document are going to be the roots that encode the keywords of this document. So dog, cow, and rat. And the roots are as follows. It's dog concatenated with the label of the polynomial, concatenated with a number. This number ensures that all of the polynomials have different roots. In this example, imagine that in the first 29 documents, there are five other documents that have the keyword dog and the same label L. By adding a number five here, we ensure that this root is unique to this polynomial. Then we have this parameter S max, which is the maximum keywords that a document can have. Imagine that in this example, this value is five. This document has three keywords, so we have to pad with two dummy keywords so that our scheme doesn't leak how many keywords the document has. So these two roots are just for padding. And then we have the final root, which is the document ID concatenated with zero and minus one. We will see later that we use this root to trigger false positive matches on this document. With these six roots, we can compute the polynomial coefficients and then encrypt them using an IPP scheme. And then this polynomial is sent to the server. Now we're going to see how the scheme works when querying for a keyword. Consider the example where Alice wants to query for the keyword dog. So first, uh, she wants to find the, uh, the documents that have the word dog, so the true positives. For this, she could loop through all possible labels and all possible values of the counter C and create these values doc concatenated with L concatenated with C, encrypt them and send them to the adversary. Now, this would trigger a match on all the documents that have the word dog. But recall that we don't want this. We want random false positives and false negatives. So instead of always sending these uh, tokens, Alice chooses and with probability P she sends them and otherwise she doesn't send them. So this will generate false negatives. Next, we want to generate the false positives. We can do this by looping through all possible user IDs and generating these values, encrypt them and then send these query tokens to the adversary. For example, if the ID is 30, this query token would generate a match for this document 30 because it has this root that is identical to the value of X. However, we also want random false positives. So we have this randomized process. So with probability Q, Alice sends this query token to the adversary and otherwise she doesn't. Now, if she sends a query token to the adversary, she keeps flipping the coin until she fails. So the number of query tokens that, the, that Alice sends to the adversary, the number of false positives will follow a geometric distribution. Finally, notice that some of the query tokens that Alice sends to the adversary will not match any of the polynomials. We call these non-matches and we also want to hide them from the adversary. So for this, we have a final loop where we look for every possible label and we generate this point AAA is a keyword that doesn't exist in the alphabet concatenated with minus one and zero. This point is not a root of any polynomial. So by sending this query token, the adversary will evaluate it in all the polynomials with label L and it will be a non-match. We generate non-matches also following a geometric distribution as we did with the false positives. Now we're going to see what the adversary sees by running our scheme. The adversary has the polynomials and then they receive a set of query tokens with some labels. First, they evaluate the first query token with label one in the polynomials with label one. Imagine that this evaluation results in a non-match. This point X is not a root of polynomial P1, but for P2, the evaluation returns a zero. So this means X1 is a root of P2. So the adversary can count this as one match for document two. Then they keep iterating for the next uh, query token. This has a label two. They tried here and it's a non-match, so it doesn't match any polynomial. 
So they can count it as a non-match for something that had a label two. And they can repeat this for all of the query tokens and eventually they can log all of the matches that they got and all of the non-matches that they got. We can prove mathematically that the number of matches of, for example, the first polynomial follows a Bernoulli distribution plus a geometric distribution. If the underlying keyword that the user is querying for is in this document, is in document one, and if it's not, then the number of matches will follow a geometric distribution. The number of matches for a label one will follow a binomial distribution plus a geometric distribution where D1 here is a parameter that depends on the number of documents that have keyword doc and label one. In the paper, we prove that these two vectors, as well as some constant parameters like database size or document size, are all the leakage of our scheme and security holds by IPP security. We also uh, perform a differential privacy analysis and we get this epsilon parameter with TPR is the true positive rate of document recovery and FPR is the false positive rate. However, this gives epsilon values that are very large. For example, for these two values of true positive rate and false positive rate, we get an epsilon of 13. Epsilon of 13 means very low privacy in terms of differential privacy. However, we will see in the experiments that even with these values, our scheme is very strong against current attacks. This doesn't mean that epsilon 13 is okay, but simply that differential privacy might not be an adequate privacy metric for this uh, privacy problem. The communication overhead when the client issues queries following a Cephian distribution is in the order of logarithm of the number of keywords in the keyword universe, and our scheme only requires one communication round. Now, regarding the computational complexity, which we measure as the number of polynomial evaluations that the server has to make, our scheme is linear with n, which is the number of documents. Cmax is a value that depends on the data set, and we give an expression of this in our paper, but in our experiments, this was just three. And finally, our scheme does not require uh, client storage other than for storing uh, constants like p and q. We compare with TURAM, which is an RM scheme that has uh, searchable capabilities. The communication overhead in TURAM is this one over here, and as you can see, it's larger than an overhead because it depends on the number of documents in the data set. It also requires at least four communication rounds, but we only require one communication round. And ORAM requires a log square n uh, storage cost, but we just require to store uh, some constants. In our paper, we compare the performance of CLRZ, which is the defense that we saw previously, with our scheme OSSC. We evaluate four different query recovery attacks on Enron dataset, and we adapt all of the attacks against these two defenses. This slide uh, summarizes the results. Uh, we plot the attack accuracy versus the false positive rate. The blue lines represent the attack accuracy against CLRZ, and the orange lines represent the attack accuracy against OSSC. In all of the cases, we see that OSSC is stronger against the attacks because the attack accuracy is always lower than for CLRZ. Especially for the graph matching attack of Polyot and Wright, we see that the attack achieves almost perfect accuracy versus CLRZ. However, as soon as we increase the false positive rate, OSSC lowers the accuracy to around 0.2. To conclude, we have seen that hiding the search pattern is challenging, but is very effective against different state-of-the-art attacks. Uh, OSSC is a searchable symmetric encryption scheme using inner product predicate encryption that only requires one communication round. It requires no client storage besides storing some constants. It hides the search pattern, which is very effective against attacks, and it achieves better asymptotic uh, communicational cost than ORM. The real downside of OSSC is its high computational cost. For example, for a server that has 160 cores, it takes around half an hour to run a single query. CLRC does the same in around 200 milliseconds. However, we still hide the search pattern, which we have seen is very effective against attacks. And I think one of the biggest contributions of this paper is the idea of generating the query tokens randomly with fresh randomness every time and hopefully in the future, other schemes can do this way faster than our scheme does. Uh, this concludes the talk. Uh, thank you, and we'll be happy to take questions now.